Hello everyone, I'm Nito King, and this is Dominion. This is going to be a long series where I'm going to teach you all the mechanics of the game, all the expansions, but for right now, we're going to keep things simple and just teach you how to play base Dominion with as simple a set of cards as I think it's possible to generate. I've got a guest with me who's learning how to play for the first time just like you. Yeah, I've never played this game before. Hello, my name is Warmall. And I'm really excited for this, because I've been wanting to try this out for a long time. And there will be a timestamp right about here on the video, in case you want to skip the explanation if you already know how to play and just want to see how the game turns out. So, Dominion is a deck-building game. Basically what that means is we each start with a common deck of cards, and there's a common supply that we can buy cards from in order to construct a more powerful deck. And once we're done constructing the deck, the game is over. So the resources that you've got, I want to start looking at these cards over on the left side. These seven cards are going to be in every game of Dominion that you'll ever play. The right column, these gold cards, are called treasures. All the cards are color-coded for their type, so if a card does something specific other than just whatever it says on the card, it'll have a color that'll indicate that and make it easier to tell. And you can right-click on any card to get a much bigger picture of it. So that's important Dominion Online interface stuff. Now the treasure cards, you've got copper, which is worth one coin. You can see the great big one on it. The silver is worth two, and the gold is worth three. That's how many coins you'll generate when you play a card of that type. Every card also has a cost in the lower left corner of it. So copper costs zero. You can buy that even if you have no money. Silver costs three, and gold costs six. So you might be wondering why would I want to pay three coins for something that's only worth two coins? The idea is that you'll play these cards to generate virtual money that only exists for that turn. You're not spending the card, you're just playing the card to get the money, spending that money, and then shuffling the card back into your deck. So if you start with a hand of just coppers, you've got five copper cards, that's only five coins. You couldn't buy a gold. But you might buy a silver, and then your five coins could potentially be a silver and four coppers. That's six coins, and that would be enough to get a gold. So buying bigger treasure cards means you can have more money in the same number of cards. Make sense? Yep. All right, to the left of the treasures, we've got these green cards. Those are your victory cards. Now, victory cards during the game don't do anything for you. You can't play them. You can't spend them. They're mostly just taking up space in your hand. So you've got estates, which are worth one victory point. Duchies are worth three victory points, and provinces are worth six. Respectively, they cost two coins for the estate, five coins for the duchy, eight coins for the province. At the end of the game, we'll count up the number of victory points for the victory cards in our decks, and whoever's got the most victory points wins. So you don't want to have too many victory cards early on, but once your deck becomes better, you've got a lot of action cards, a lot of good treasure cards, you'll be able to work around having some victory cards in your deck. Generally, the idea in Dominion is to get as many provinces as possible. So you're going to need a deck that can consistently generate at least eight coins per turn. Fair enough? Yeah. And then finally, we've got the purple card, the Curse. It's the only purple card in the game that I know of. It's always possible there will be more in future expansions. Curses are just as useless as victory cards, but they're even worse because every curse you have will make you lose a victory point at the end of the game. You can buy them for zero, but I don't recommend it. Usually what will happen with curses is there will be cards that will give your opponent curses. So... Very, very rarely, I actually have bought curses, but it gets into some more complicated stuff. This game, the curses are not likely to matter. I just want to point out that they're there. 
Yeah, I don't really see... Not knowing what cards are in the game, it doesn't seem very viable for me to buy one. Yeah. I would suggest not buying any this game. Once you get better at Dominion and you understand more of the mechanics, you might see that there are times when you could want to buy one. In fact, I remember one time where I actually played a card that would let me buy more of them at a time because I wanted to have that many. Okay. So quantities, just to make sure you're aware, there are 60 copper cards, including 7 that we each start with. And there are 40 silvers and 30 golds. Victory cards, any victory card pile in a 2-player game will have 8. And in a 3- or 4-player game there will be 12. We also start with 3 additional estates. So our starting deck is 7 coppers, 3 estates. And for a 2-player game there are 10 curses. In a 3-player game there would be 20, in a 4-player game there would be 30. So we automatically have 3 victory points. Right. But, of course, those estates are kind of going to get in the way of the early game. You know, you can imagine if you had just the 7 coppers, your deck would be a lot better, because you'd be getting 5 coins every turn. Right. As it is, you'll probably, you'll start your first turns either with 4 coins and 3 coins, or 5 coins and 2 coins. In either order. Just from, yeah, likelihood. So those seven cards are in every Dominion game. But the thing that makes Dominion dynamic and fun is that just the base set alone has 26 additional cards, and then there are hundreds more in the expansions. For any given game, we'll be picking 10 of those cards to form the kingdom or the supply for that game. In this case, we've chosen 10. This set is called First Game, and is designed to highlight a lot of the game's mechanics without bringing in anything too complicated. So all 10 of these cards are action cards. Action cards basically just do whatever it says on the card. There's no practical limit to what an action card could do. It's just whatever Donald X. Vaccarino, the creator of the game, and his friends think is fun and interesting to play with. There can also be additional treasure cards, additional victory cards. Some of the expansions even have other types of cards that they'll introduce. But for now, we're keeping things pretty simple. So let's take a look at what these specific cards do when you play them. Now on your turn, you're going to start with a hand of cards. You have three phases in your turn. Your action phase, you get to play an action card if you have any in your hand that you want to play. You resolve whatever that action card says, and generally your action phase is then finished. Then you have your buy phase. This is the point when you play any number of treasures from your hand, and then you can buy one card from the kingdom that has a cost equal to or less than the number of coins that you got from the treasures you played. Finally, your cleanup phase, you'll discard all the cards you have in play and all the cards in your hand and draw a new hand of five cards. Then play passes to the next player. So I want to take a look at the individual cards that we've got here one by one and explain what they do, starting with the smithy top center. So the smithy costs four coins and it gives you plus three cards. It's kind of a shorthand because this is the sort of thing that happens a lot on the action cards. When it says plus some number of cards, it means draw that many cards from your deck and add them to your hand. So ideally you would get more treasure cards when you play a smithy, and then you can afford a more expensive card. You might also draw some victory cards. They don't help you on that turn, but it means that you won't be drawing them into your next hand, and hopefully your next hand will be better for it. The downside is you might draw some other action cards with your smithy, and in this case you've already played your one action card for the turn. That's not good. Those action cards don't do you any good, right? Right. So take a look at the village, bottom row, second from the right. This one gives you plus one card, and it also gives you plus two actions. And any card that says plus some number of actions means you can play that many more action cards during your action phase. 
the game keeps track of that for you. So if you play a village, you get to replace that card in your hand, and then you can play two more action cards. So let's say the next card you play is a smithy, now you draw three more cards, and if you have any actions, you still have one action left to play one of those action cards. So village and smithy work really well together. There are two other kind of vanilla bonuses you might get from some of these cards. Take a look at the market right above the village. This one gives you plus a card and plus an action. So you get to draw a new card to replace it and you can play another action afterward. It also gives you plus one coin. So in addition to whatever money you get from the treasures you play, you'll also have one coin from the market to spend during your buy phase. Perhaps more importantly, it also gives you plus one buy, meaning that you can buy an additional card during your buy phase. So let's say you play a market and then you play six coins worth of cards. You now have seven coins and two buys. So you could buy maybe a market for five and a seller for two. Or you could buy a smithy and a village. Or you could buy a gold and a copper and leave one coin unspent or you could buy just a gold, you don't have to buy a second card. Now, any unspent money just disappears at the end of the turn, but maybe that's what you want. So all those bonuses make sense? Yep. All right, so another card I want to look at is Militia, top row, left side. Now, this is kind of a special card. If you look at the bottom of it, it's got two types, action and attack. The attack means that it has a detrimental effect on the other players. So in this case, when you play a Militia, you'll get two more coins for your buy phase, and then everyone else has to discard down to three cards in hand. So everybody took five coins at the, start of, at the end of their previous turn, now they got to get rid of two of those cards. So if you've got a hand that adds up to five coins and you really wanted to buy a market, this is going to hurt you. There are ways to defend against it. For example, if you've got two victory cards, you'll probably happily discard those. Right. So if you've got a lot of big money cards, you might still be able to afford what you want, even with only three of them. Another defense is the blue card on the bottom row. That's Moat. Now with a Moat, it's an action-reaction, and the reaction is the reason that the card is blue. That means that you can play it during your action phase, and you'll get plus two cards. But you can also use it in response to some other event that takes place. That's what's described below the line on the card. And in this case, when someone else plays an attack card, specifically a militia in this game, you can reveal the moat from your hand, and you won't be affected by that attack. So if someone plays a militia, and you've got a moat in your hand, you get to keep all of your cards. You can choose not to reveal it, but in this case, that's rarely going to be a good option. It also doesn't say you have to discard it, so the moat stays in your hand. You can reveal it for further attacks, or you can even play it during your turn. So the rest of the cards do something a little different. So take a look at the merchant, bottom row center. When you play this card, you just get plus one card, plus one action, so it replaces itself. But if you then play a silver card during your turn, you get an additional coin from the merchant. Now, if you have multiple merchants out, you'll get additional coins, but you do have to play one silver in order to get that bonus. If you don't play a silver that turn, you get nothing from the merchant. It doesn't hurt you, but it wouldn't help you either. So Merchant is good to have if you've got a lot of silver. Next up, take a look at bottom row left side, the Seller. This card gives you plus one action, so you can play another action if you draw one. And the instructions here, discard any number of cards, then draw that many. So if you've got a hand with a whole bunch of victory cards, you can get rid of them and hopefully draw something good. So Seller is bad with Militia because your hand size will be smaller, but if you've got a lot of, say, Villages and Smithies, you can draw a bunch of cards, 
If you got a lot of victory cards, the seller is great to get rid of those and get something good. There are two more important concepts you're going to need to know. Bottom row right side is the workshop. The workshop says gain a card costing up to four coins. And gaining means to take a card from the supply and add it to your discard pile. So you basically just get to take that card for free and add it to your deck. That make sense? Yeah. All right, one more thing. Uh, top row, second from the left, remodel. For four coins, this says trash a card from your hand and gain a card costing up to two coins more than it. When you trash something, you remove it from your deck permanently. Now, on the right side above the log, there's a view trash button. If you click that, you'll be able to see all the cards that have been trashed during the game. If functionally a card that's been trashed is no longer part of the game at all. There are some cards in some of the expansions that'll do things with the cards that are in the trash. Some cards will let you gain stuff from the trash. Some cards will have bonuses based on what's in the trash. But in this game, that card is just gone. So you can gain a card of any type that costs up to two coins more than what you trashed. So those starting estates don't do you a lot of good, but you could remodel them into, say, a militia or a smithy or a silver. You can also, late in the game, remodel a gold into a province, because the difference in cost is two. So if you don't need that purchasing power anymore, you can get a really good card for it. And after you, say, remodel or workshop, you still have your buy phase. You can use whatever money is left in your hand to buy another card. And finally, top row right side, mine shows you how these instructions can get a little more complicated. So mine says you may trash a treasure from your hand, so it can only be a copper, silver, or gold in this game. Then gain a treasure to your hand, costing up to three coins more than it. So in this case, you could trash a copper from your hand, and then take a silver. And instead of going to your discard, it'll go straight into your hand. So you've increased the amount of money in your hand by one by playing the mine. Plus, that card is now permanently worth one coin more. And then same from silver up to gold. Exactly. And one of the expansions includes yet another treasure that costs nine coins and is worth five. So you could upgrade from gold into platinum if that were a thing. So, any questions about any of the cards or how any of this works? No, I think I should be good. I'll learn more as we go. Yep. So, one more thing. The end game condition. There are two ways that this game can end. At the end of your turn, if there are no provinces left in the supply, that's the end of the game. Otherwise, if any three other piles are empty, that can be the treasures, that can be duchies, estates, curses, or any of these action cards, three piles empty, that's the end of the game. And at that point, whoever's got the most victory points wins. And right now we've got victory point counters visible, so you can see we each have three victory points for the three estates that are in our starting hands. So, I think that should pretty well cover it. So, any uh, any final questions before we get started? I don't think so. I think I'm ready to go. All right. So, let's go for it. Hit the start game whenever you're ready. And it looks like the game has picked you to go first. Oh, boy. So, yeah, first is your action phase, but you don't have any actions yet. So, it skips straight to your buy phase. You can click your treasures one at a time, or there should be a play treasures button, so you can just flop all of them at once. Yeah, you don't have to play all your treasures, and you don't have to spend all your money on cards. You don't even have to buy anything if you don't want to. So it looks to me like you've got two coins this hand and five for the next one. Yeah, I think I'll be taking the seller first. Yeah, probably a good move. 
Yeah. If you see me buying militias, you might consider getting moats. Yeah, I'll be watching for that. So I've got 4-3, oh. I think. I mean, this board 5-2 is pretty nice, because you can get an early market or mine. You know, mine is great. The earlier you can get it, the better. I am going to go for a remodel. Start doing something with my estates. I will absolutely take that mine first. Yeah, and seller is a good pairing with mine, because if they both come up in the same hand, you can play both of them. So on three, I've got some options. I'm going to buy a village. It's not all that useful yet, but once I start getting some other cards that don't give me plus actions, the village will be good to help me play them all. In this case, I'm actually going to take the militia. Sounds good. And I've got four. I'm going to take a militia as well. The best defense is a good offense. Well, actually, the best defense is a moat. All right, so you pick the treasure you want to trash, and then click on a pile to gain a card from that pile. Okay. And then... Silver is a very good choice. So that gives me then four gold. Yep. Or not gold, yep. but four treasure. Yep. So I'm going to take a moat. All right. Seems pretty sensible. So I'm going to play a village, draw an extra card. Then I'm going to remodel trash in a state. So I lose the victory point. And I'm going to gain a smithy. And then with three coins, I'm going to take another village. So I just got two good cards that turn, and I got rid of an estate that was otherwise clogging up my deck. Yeah. So I'm going to play my cellar. All right. I'm going to discard... Yeah, you highlight all the cards you want to discard, and then Two hit the discard button. You got it. Yeah, in this case, Dang. you don't have to tell me what all the cards are. I can assume they're two estates, but I only get to see whatever's on top of your discard pile. I was I was saying so for the uh, people watching the video. Yeah, who cares about them? <laughs> this list plays not for them. But yeah, just to let you know, your discard pile, you can't look through it unless a card specifically tells you that you can. You just got to okay. keep track of what's in there. Yeah. And I can't look through it at all. So hopefully those two cards you got are better than the estates. Yeah. Uh, not exactly what I wanted, but I can't exactly... Uh... Can't exactly do much with it, sadly. All right. Well, hopefully you didn't draw any of your good actions there. Hate to think of that militia sitting in your hand unplayed. <laughs> um, play those. How many is that in total? Yeah. Well, you got six. I think I want the buying power. So I'll take some gold. Sounds good. Now I've got a smithy, two estates, and two coppers. If I play the smithy, there's a good chance that I'm going to get some money. But there's also a good chance that I'm going to draw some actions that I won't be able to play. So I'm not going to play my smithy. I'm just going to play these two cards and buy a moat. So I played the mine to get rid of my copper and replace with a silver. Yep. 
Yeah, anytime you can't see what's going on, you can always look at the log on the right side. That'll show you what's happening. Sometimes the game will make intelligent decisions for you, like it'll say, you played a remodel and you only have coppers in your hand, so obviously you wanted to trash a copper. And it might happen too fast to see it, but the log will show everything. And in this case, I think I'll take the village. Sounds good. Alright, so I'm going to play a village, draw a village, play a village. And I've got a remodel and four coppers. I have to decide whether I want to get rid of one of my coppers. I think in this case, I'll go ahead and do that. So it trashes a copper for me, and I'm going to take another moat. And now I go into my buy phase, where I can spend my remaining three coppers. I'm going to take a silver. Okay, so I'm going to play my uh, seller again. All right, hopefully you get better luck. Now this turn looks familiar. <laughs> it does. Um, but this time I actually... have a little more money this time. Uh, lucky seven. Not now, there quite... aren't a lot of cards in Dominion that cost seven. No, I, I was hoping maybe to get that eight for a province. But I think in this case I actually... I'm currently a little low on victory points. Yeah, well, victory cards aren't going to do you a whole lot of good yet. The thing is, you want to build up to being able to buy a lot of victory cards quickly later in the game. But right now, you know, every estate that you draw, you're going to have that province in there as well. Or, you know, duchy, if that's what you choose to buy. Yeah. So if you want to go for a money-heavy strategy, you might consider getting another gold here. Otherwise, Market is a pretty good buy, especially since it's the only card we have that'll let you buy more than one card if you do manage to get a whole lot of money. Yeah, and in these kind of games, I tend to try and get myself a little money-heavy, so I think I'll take the Market. Yeah, and especially if you've got a Market in 7, that's really good. So here I've got a choice of actions. I'm going to play the Militia. Hmm. Yeah, I just saw your moat go by, so I'm pretty sure you don't have it in your hand. Which means you're going to have to discard two cards. Yeah, yeah, it was really... <laughs> yeah, that can hurt. Alright, and once again I've hit four. I have not yet managed to reach five. Uh, what do I want on four? don't think I want another silver at this point. I'll take another village. All right, so I do have a moat in hand, so I don't need to discard anything. No, I was I was kind of banking a little more on the money in this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see why you would keep the militia over the mine, because that gets you to five again. Yeah, and in this case, I th think I'll take another market. Seems pretty sensible. So I'm going to play a village, see what I get. Uh, I got a couple of options. I'm going to play another village. So now I've got enough actions I can play the moat, draw some cards, and if I do draw some actions, I'll still be able to play them. I didn't. So now I think I will remodel a copper into a seller because that leaves me with five coins 
Now I don't know whether I want to buy that mine or just get right to a market. I think I'll have to go for the mine. I've got enough villages at this point. I can handle having a number of action cards. Yeah, as you can see, once you start getting some big treasure cards, the coppers become a lot less useful and you want to try to get rid of them. Yeah. Which looks like you're doing pretty well. Yeah, just slowly trying to uh, work up. Um, think I'll take... I'm thinking either the silver or the workshop in this case. Yeah, it sort of depends on what you're planning to get with the workshop. And every time you play the workshop, you could say, gain a silver. Yeah. In which case, maybe the workshop would be the best, because then I could just use that to gain silvers rather than buying the silver. Yeah, the question is, how many unplayed actions do you have... Because, say, the mine and the workshop come up in the same hand, or the militia in the workshop, you'd have to choose between them. Right. And if I remember correctly, you've only got one village so far. Yeah. Mm, maybe so, the village, actually. Yeah, those are all things you need to keep actions. in mind. Yeah. You can also use the workshop to gain a village. That's true. And I kind of want to get more mines to get rid of more copper to upgrade to silver. Yeah, more mines and the actions to play them are take, big things. I'll take the village. Alright. Yeah, usually I don't buy more than one mine. Because it just seems excessive. So there's my village smithy combo. And that gives me another village. So I've got a few options here. I'm going to sell her. Discard. Well, I want to keep one estate. I'm going to remodel an estate into another smithy. And then I'm going to mine a copper into a silver, which gives me four. And that's what we call a combo. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's a nice combo. Since I had those villages, I was able to play a lot of actions. I'm trying to think what else is left in my deck. I think I've got one more village, another moat. Uh, do I want a workshop? I'm going to get another militia, just to put the pressure on you. <laughs> yeah, it kind of makes me feel like maybe I should be buying more moats. Possibly. And the downside is, if I don't play a militia on you for a particular turn, moats not the best card. Yeah. It's kind so of I like a less good smithy. Two buys this time. Yep, because you played that market. Nine total. Very nice. Say so you could buy a gold and a three card, or you could buy a five and a four, or you could buy a province and you know just not do anything with the other coin. Well, I could also take a copper. You could. Um. And I think you've got probably enough treasure cards in your deck at this point. I think I want but, a moat for sure. Alright. Because you've got that'll quite leave. a you've got quite a few militias now. Yep, and that'll leave you seven. Uh, I could take another remodel. do I even have a remodel? I don't think I have any remodels. Uh, yeah, I don't think you've got a remodel. No. 
Ah, uh, jeez. I mean, I do have some silvers now, so merchant wouldn't be too bad. But I gotta really hope that I get them together. Yeah, and particularly having stuff like villages and smithies will help you match up any two cards in your deck. Thing, Thing is, you've only got one buy left for your seven coins. Yeah, and that market still seems really... The market's a good card. I'll take the market, just because I'm able to do a lot with it. Obviously, it's possible I'm really screwing everything up, but it's my first time playing. Yeah. Okay. I'll play the village. I've got options here. Lots of options. I've got a moat. Need to decide whether I actually want to play it. I don't think I do. I'm going to play the Militia. And then I can remodel a moat. Doesn't seem like a good idea. I think it's a great idea. I can remodel a copper and I'll still have five that I could use to buy a market. Or I could remodel a silver into a market. Or which, a mine. Which just sounds like you're buying a market. Yeah, and then I'll have four cards to spend. So the question is, what would I have at the end of doing all that? And are there any two-cost cards that I really want at this point? I think I'm going to go ahead, remodel a copper into a cellar and then buy a market. Okay, so I got a market again, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. And I got another market, which is also nice. Sweet. Yeah, they stack. And then I'll play my militia. And for once, I'm left without... Without a moat. A moat! Which was a pretty good guess, because you had said... Because you had used the moat in the last turn, that I think you were talking about remodeling, and I think you have to remodel from your hand. Yep. Which means you had a moat in your hand, and I have two moats, which means you had none left. Yep, so that's easy to dump. Then I've got to decide, what else do I want to get rid of? I think chances are good you'll have a moat, so I'm going to get rid of a militia. And I've got seven coins now. And three buys. Yes. Though. So, so you've got options. Lots of options. I could get a couple small, or I could do two medium or a large and a small purchase. Um, I'm really liking this market setup I've got going. More markets, more fun. Yeah, part of overall Dominion strategy is deciding what you want your deck to look like at the end. So, I mean, you can have a deck where, say, you've got no treasures, and your entire economy is you get to play eight markets every turn. Which isn't exactly bad. Yeah. So I that's think, enough to buy a province. Yeah, I think I'll take the market again. And I haven't been doing too bad about not having moats in my hand at the moment, because I just so happen every time to have a couple of states... So I think I'll take the seller. All right. And do I take the copper? Hmm. 
that's up to you. I mean, again, you've got a lot of good treasure cards, and the more treasure cards you have, the fewer action cards you're going to have in your hand. Yeah, so, I haven't really been hurting for buying, so I think I'll end. Yeah. Yeah, generally you want to try to get rid of the coppers as you go. So I kept a village and a smithy, so now I'm back up to five cards. And I'm going to mine a copper into a silver to get my five and buy a market. Okay, so I got the village. I'll then use my mine trash a copper to get a silver. Now I got six. Hooray! Yeah. Shame you didn't have a remodel. You could remodel that silver into a market. In that case, though, I'd be losing a uh, gold. Or a uh, treasure. True. Yeah, it's all trade-offs. You know, particularly if you've got a hand where you don't have a lot of treasure cards, then it might be worth doing something with one of the treasure cards you have, because you're not missing out on buying anything good. Yeah, I think in this situation, I'm going to act... I have quite a few silver now, so I think I'm going to take that merchant. All right. So I'm going to play a market, basically a free play. That's pretty nice. Go for a village, and I got another market. Okay, so I've got options. I can remodel either an estate or a cellar into something good. Or I can play the cellar and try to get something better. Uh, let's see what else I can get. Ooh, nice. I got a smithy with two actions left. And now I've got three action cards, which I didn't really want to have. But I'm going to go ahead and play a militia. Thankfully, I had a moat this time. Yep. But this gave you more gold. Yeah. I was playing the militia for the coins, because now I've got ten coins and three buys. Which means you could also... Well, I guess there isn't anything here that really costs three. Well, I guess there's the village and the merchant and the workshop. Yeah. So do I want... three merchants? How much silver do you have? You have three in th right there. Yeah, I've got quite a few silvers. And the mine will help me get more. I've still got a bunch of copper left because I haven't been getting rid of it all that quickly. I was going to say, I didn't feel like my uh, mines popped up lately, but it actually was just last turn. Yeah. And the problem with having too many mines is, eventually it becomes a dead card, and there's nothing really good to remodel it into. Maybe I want gold. I think we're going to go for Market, Merchant, Moat. There you go, nice Village Moat combo, so if you yeah. draw some actions you can play them. And another thing worth watching for is when your deck gets shuffled. Because right now you shuffled your deck with a market, a village, and a moat in play, and whatever you have in your hand, which means you're going to have to get through those other 15 cards before you see those cards again. Yeah. Yep, 
nice cellar play when you got a lot of big hands, but it looks like you didn't have much you wanted to get rid of. Yeah, sometimes you got to ask yourself, is it worth trying to salvage this turn by playing and drawing something? Do I really need to do that? I mean, with two buys, seven coins is not bad. No, it's not. Because I definitely want another moat. Or do I actually at this point? Uh... And you got two, and they both came up in the same turn. Yeah, drawing a moat mid-turn is pretty much the worst thing. Yeah, and then at the end there I was hoping two cards to get a little more money for my two buys. Mm-hmm. Think Yeah, if I just had one more <laughs> one more treasure, I mean, not one more moat. Yeah. I'll take the village. And some of these piles are starting to get low. Yeah, I mean, I I don't have nearly enough buys or gains to empty three piles anytime soon. And you're also ahead by two victory points, because you've still got all three of your starting estates. I remodeled two of them. So you've got a slight advantage points-wise. Yeah, I think I'll take the think... militia. All right. Keep pressure on you, because I know you have another moat now, and then it's also a money card. Yep. Get some villages out there. Plop down a militia, because I know you don't have any moats in your hand. Yep. Get a smithy going. Get pretty much the worst hand. I'll discard just that. Oh, lovely. <laughs> and that's that's the last card I wanted to get at that point. But that's okay, because now I've got seven. I'm going to buy a gold. Yeah, if you've got, say, a village and a smithy or a couple of markets in your hand, even with three cards, you can still get off to a decent start. I was able to use my merchant silver combo there. Nice. Got your six. Yeah. I still have as much money as I need, so there's not much point for me to take that gold. But maybe I'll take the duchy, actually. Alright. Start to buy green cards? Yeah, just to... Well, I will point out I don't think you have yet managed to hit eight. Well, you, you hit uh, nine a couple times. Recently, you've been having problems with getting to eight, and those provinces are the big prize. Getting a duchy at this point is not going to help you hit eight. In fact, it's going to make it harder for you to hit eight because there's one more dead card in your deck. So maybe so, I... Actually, I can take two yeah. silvers. Yeah. I'd say if, if you see me threatening to end the game very soon, then you might consider going green. But otherwise, you probably want to continue getting cards that will help you get to your 8. Okay. Um, I'll take a silver. Considering the merchant, but I think just another silver would be good. Yeah, either way. And the silver's always worth two. The merchant's worth one if it collides with the silver. Like so. Uh, we'll get that market in play. Another market. Uh, but I also, good. I also know I'm currently... I'm still ahead in a victory points, though, correct? 
Yep. So you don't want you don't want to be ending the game really quickly without first gaining that lead. Not too quickly. But again, we've got piles that are at five, four, and three. Nothing that's going to end pretty soon. So I am going to go ahead and get a province on 14 and a gold. And now that does put you ahead. Yep, I'm moving into the end game. I like my deck. Nice, going for gold. Alright, so that is potentially hastening the game to its conclusion, although I'm not sure that buying out moats is in my immediate future. Get another village in there. And... I got a couple of interesting options here. I'm going to play the cellar and ditch a couple of moats. Draw another moat, of course. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to mine a silver into a gold, and I'm going to remodel the gold into a province. Mm. And I've got two. Uh, moat or cellar. The cellars have been really good. I think I've got enough moats. Take another cellar. Probably not the right decision, but it's the decision I made. So now you can kind of see, hopefully, how the different cards work well together. Yeah. That hurts a little bit. Uh, what do I not Your want? deck just reshuffled, but I was hoping that there's a chance your moats didn't come back up. Yep. I'll get rid of those two. In this case, I will take the province. Yep. Kind of have to make sure I don't get too far ahead. If I get five provinces, the game's pretty much over. Can't really do anything with one. And there's no Not point really. in taking the copper. Alright, so I'll mark it. I'll mine a silver into a gold. And for four. I'll take another village. Yeah, I think this, the uh, militia on that turn hurt me somewhat. I wouldn't say I had any really good plays with those two cards I got rid of. So at the end of that turn there, I ended up with three silver. Nice. But you only get one bonus coin from the merchant. But it was enough to get me up to eight. It was. In this case, I'm going to take the province again. Makes sense. Let's mark it. Do our village smithy combo. Village again. Village one more time so I can play this moat. Uh, I'll go ahead and militia. So I know you've got a moat. That's important. And yeah, I'll get rid of the copper as well. 
All right, nice. So let me count money here. I've got uh, uh, I'll go ahead and cycle a little bit more. That was awful, utterly awful. I'll go ahead and play a militia for the money. I've got 13 and two buys. Definitely taking a province. And do I want a Dutch here or do I want to just get a market? I think just a market. Yeah, all your villages seem to be coming up at once. Yeah, I wanted more markets. Oh, I have a moat. Yeah, so now you can see the money is kind of getting in the way of getting to the actions you wanted to play with your villages there. And you couldn't quite get to your eight. take the seller because the seller actually helped me get rid of cards that weren't going to do me any good yep all right there's my village to go with my smithy and don't need all these provinces don't think I need that either not as helpful as I would have liked uh I wonder if I want to keep the militia. Yeah, I'll hang on to it. There we go. There's my villages. I knew they were in there somewhere. Alright. Count buying power. Slap a militia out there just in case. Okay, so I could play another Militia. That wouldn't do any good because you're already down to three cards. I can mine something. But I've got enough at this point. I'm going to remodel another gold into a province. And I'm going to buy a province. Hmm. I think that gives me an insurmountable lead. Yeah, I think that uh, kind of solidifies your win. Yeah, I don't know if you can get a province and ten more coins at the same turn. So you can take the loss with grace, or you can buy a duchy and keep holding on to hope. Well, I mean, I've never been one to give up before. But the odds of you getting up to eight... I mean, at this point, if you gain another province... It, it's not like losing worse is going to matter. True. Yeah, it's about what you have to do. So... That I, that uh, militia actually kind of hurt me a bit there on the last turn. Mm -hmm. They do that. So, I, I've got eight coins right now. I can just end yeah, it. Yeah, you can just end it. But... <laughs> you can see how your turn plays out. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I'm not going to get an extra buy, though. So, rather than prolonging things, I'll just take the last province. Good win. Yep, thank you. So I definitely yeah. think I see a strategy I'll try. Oh, that's mm -hmm. loud. I think I definitely see a strategy I'll try out next time a bit there with the remodeling of golds into provinces. Yeah, well, that's why I pointed that out when I was explaining yeah. the card, because that is a really big play. Yeah, normally, I've played a... Well, I've only played one other deck-building game, and I tend to work that by getting a high amounts of money through the turn rather than switching cards into other cards. Mm -hmm. So that's a new concept that I 
we'll have to try and get used to. Obviously, yeah. using the mine to get the gold into silver, and then silver in, or the copper into silver was my best bet at the start. And I still had a couple of copper at the end. On my last hand, I had a copper, and I'm like, oh, what's that doing there? Yeah, you can see I trashed a lot more coppers, but I was also remodeling them into cellars and moats. So, you know, those ten initial cards, most games you're going to want to get rid of as many of them as you can. There are occasional games where you want to stock up on either copper or estates, but, you know, those are specific cards. You know, remodel is great, because you can get rid of those cards you don't want and get some good cards. Yeah, I can see at the end there I still had three coppers left. Yeah, and you can see I my entire treasure base is five cards. And I was only buying the golds for the purpose of remodeling them into provinces. And of course, it is an entirely viable strategy, and a lot of times it's actually kind of a baseline to test yourself against just buying treasures. And on this board, for example, you might buy one smithy, maybe get another smithy later on, and then do nothing but buy silver and gold until you can afford provinces. That's true, because then if you don't have other cards in your deck clogging up, you can just have a bunch of money all at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't usually have to worry about drawing any actions with your smithy, because all you've got in your deck is money. Yeah, that's something I'll try, since that's kind of a strategy that appeals to me on the money side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it took us 19 turns to end this game. Somebody who's just buying big money would probably end it a lot faster and get a lot more provinces. But in this case, you would have the militias to contend with, so your hands wouldn't be as valuable until you have lots of gold. Yeah. And then if you do throw a militia at me when all I have is money, well, two less cards on money isn't going to probably hurt too bad if I have a lot of high money cards. Right. And you might consider in that strategy even getting a mine so that you can you know, upgrade some of your treasures instead of just buying more. Yeah, but... a, a smithy remodel and mine would probably be a good combination to have with a large pile of money. Yeah, that might well work. But as you can see, there are lots of different strategies you can use here. You could go heavily into buying markets. You, know, you can get those militias and force your opponent to clog up their deck with moats. You know, village and smithy, if you get enough of each, as you can see, I could get a huge hand there and then sell her away a bunch of victory cards. You can also, you know, invest heavily in silver and just make a stack of merchants. And it only gets more complicated with more people. Yeah, I think if you have three or four players, the dynamic is very different from playing with just two. Because with two, things are a lot more predictable and you know what the other person's capacity for buying things is. Plus the attacks are only one-on-one. -on -one. If you've got three or four people, that's a lot more people who might play a militia on you, so the moats become more important. Well, I certainly didn't go into this expecting to win. And I think losing by, what? Uh, almost 19? double, yeah. Almost double my points is, well, more than double my points. Yeah, that's not yeah, too bad. Yeah, I think you did pretty well your first time out. And definitely buying the uh, victory points at the midpoint wouldn't have helped me at all. Yeah. I just kind of I kind of got I think I took too many villages instead of markets. I think what you really needed were some smithies. Yeah, the plus three cards could have helped in a lot of cases. Yeah. Like I said, Village Smithy is an excellent combination, and once you've got all the cards in your hand and you've got more actions to play them, that's how you're going to get your markets, it's how you're going to get your merchants and your silvers to line up. So anyway, hope this was instructive for everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.
Bye. To generate virtual money that only exists for that turn. You're not spending the card, you're just playing the card to get the money, spending that money, and then shuffling the card back into your deck. So if you start with a hand of just coppers, you've got five copper cards, that's only five coins. You couldn't buy a gold. But you might buy a silver, and then your five coins could potentially be a silver and four coppers. That's six coins, and that would be enough to get a gold. So buying bigger treasure cards means you can have more money in the same number of cards. Make sense? Yep. All right, to the left of the treasures, we've got these green cards. Those are your victory cards. Now, victory cards during the game don't do anything for you. You can't play them. You can't spend them. They're mostly just taking up space in your hand. So you've got estates, which are worth one victory point. Duchies are worth three victory points, and provinces are worth six. Respectively, they cost two coins for the estate, five coins for the duchy, eight coins for the province. At the end of the game, we'll count up the number of victory points for the victory cards in our decks, and whoever's got the most victory points wins. So you don't want to have too many victory cards early on, but once your deck becomes better, you've got a lot of action cards, a lot of good treasure cards, you'll be able to work around having some victory cards in your deck. Generally, the idea in Dominion is to get as many provinces as possible. So you're going to need a deck that can consistently generate at least eight coins per turn. Fair enough? Yeah. And then finally, we've got the purple card, the Curse. It's the only purple card in the game that I know of. It's always possible there will be more in future expansions. Curses are just as useless as victory cards, but they're even worse because every curse you have will make you lose a victory point at the end of the game. You can buy them for zero, but I don't recommend it. Usually what will happen with curses is there will be cards... That... Hello everyone, I'm Nito King, and this is Dominion. This is going to be a long series where I'm going to teach you all the mechanics of the game, all the expansions, but for right now, we're going to keep things simple and just teach you how to play base Dominion with as simple a set of cards as I think it's possible to generate. I've got a guest with me who's learning how to play for the first time just like you. Yeah, I've never played this game before. Hello, my name is Warmall, and I'm really excited for this because I've been wanting to try this out for a long time. And there will be a timestamp right about here on the video in case you want to skip the explanation if you already know how to play and just want to see how the game turns out. So Dominion is a deck building game. Basically what that means is we each start with a common deck of cards and there's a common supply that we can buy cards from in order to construct a more powerful deck. And once we're done constructing the deck, the game is over. So the resources that you've got, I want to start looking at these cards over on the left side. These seven cards are going to be in every game of Dominion that you'll ever play. The right column, these gold cards, are called treasures. All the cards are color-coded for their type, so if a card does something specific other than just whatever it says on the card, it'll have a color that'll indicate that and make it easier to tell. And you can right-click on any card to get a much bigger picture of it. So that's important Dominion Online interface stuff. Now the treasure cards, you've got copper, which is worth one coin. You can see the great big one on it. The silver is worth two, and the gold is worth three. That's how many coins you'll generate when you play a card of that type. Every card also has a cost in the lower left corner of it. So copper costs zero. You can buy that even if you have no money. Silver costs three, and gold costs six. So you might be wondering why would I want to pay three coins for something that's only worth two coins? The idea is that you'll play these cards and is designed to highlight a lot of the game's mechanics without bringing in anything too complicated. So all 10 of these cards are action cards. Action cards, 
basically just do whatever it says on the card. There's no practical limit to what an action card could do. It's just whatever Donald Dex Vaccarino, the creator of the game, and his friends think is fun and interesting to play with. There can also be additional treasure cards, additional victory cards. Some of the expansions even have other types of cards that they'll introduce. But for now, we're keeping things pretty simple. So let's take a look at what these specific cards do when you play them. Now on your turn, you're going to start with a hand of cards. You have three phases in your turn. Your action phase, you get to play an action card if you have any in your hand that you want to play. You resolve whatever that action card says, and generally your action phase is then finished. Then you have your buy phase. This is the point when you play any number of treasures from your hand, and then you can buy one card from the kingdom that has a cost equal to or less than the number of coins that you got from the treasures you played. Finally, your cleanup phase, you'll discard all the cards you have in play and all the cards in your hand and draw a new hand of five cards. Then play passes to the next player. So I want to take a look at the individual cards that we've got here one by one and explain what they do, starting with the smithy top center. So the smithy costs four coins and it gives you plus three cards. It's kind of a shorthand because this is the sort of thing that happens a lot on the action cards. When it says plus some number of cards, it means draw that many cards from your deck and add them to your hand. So ideally you would get more treasure cards when you play a smithy, and then you can afford a more expensive card. You might also draw some victory cards. They don't help you on that turn, but it means that you will give your opponent curses. So very, very rarely I actually have bought curses, but it gets into some more complicated stuff. This game, the curses are not likely to matter. I just want to point out that they're there. Yeah, I don't really see, not knowing what cards are in the game, it doesn't seem very viable for me to buy one. Yeah, I would suggest not buying any of this game. Once you get better at Dominion and you understand more of the mechanics, you might see that there are times when you could want to buy one. In fact, I remember one time where I actually played a card that would let me buy more of them at a time, because I wanted to have that many. Okay. So quantities, just to make sure you're aware, there are 60 copper cards, including 7 that we each start with. And there are 40 silvers and 30 golds. Victory cards, any victory card pile in a 2-player game will have 8. And in a 3 or 4-player game there will be 12. We also start with 3 additional estates. So our starting deck is 7 coppers, 3 estates. And for a 2-player game there are 10 curses. In a three-player game, there would be 20. In a four-player game, there would be 30. So we automatically have three victory points. Right. But, of course, those estates are kind of going to get in the way of the early game. You know, you can imagine if you had just the seven coppers, your deck would be a lot better. Because you'd be getting five coins every turn. Right. As it is, you'll probably, you'll start your first turns either with four coins and three coins or f five coins and two coins in either order. Just from, yeah, likelihood. So those seven cards are in every Dominion game, but the thing that makes Dominion dynamic and fun is that just the base set alone has 26 additional cards, and then there are hundreds more in the expansions. For any given game, we'll be picking 10 of those cards to form the kingdom or the supply for that game. In this case, we've chosen 10. This set is called First Game, and won't be drawing them into your next hand, and hopefully your next hand will be better for it. The downside is you might draw some other action cards with your smithy, and in this case, you've already played your one action card for the turn. That's not good. Those action cards don't do you any good, right? Right. So take a look at the village, bottom row, second from the right. This one gives you plus one card, and it also gives you plus two actions. 
and any card that says plus some number of actions means you can play that many more action cards during your action phase. The game keeps track of that for you. So if you play a village, you get to replace that card in your hand and then you can play two more action cards. So let's say the next card you play is a smithy, now you draw three more cards, and if you have any actions, you still have one action left to play one of those action cards. So village and smithy work really well together. There are two other kind of vanilla bonuses you might get from some of these cards. Take a look at the market right above the village. This one gives you plus a card and plus an action. So you get to draw a new card to replace it and you can play another action afterward. It also gives you plus one coin. So in addition to whatever money you get from the treasures you play, you'll also have one coin from the market to spend during your buy phase. Perhaps more importantly, it also gives you plus one buy, meaning that you can buy an additional card during your buy phase. So let's say you play a market and then you play six coins worth of cards. You now have seven coins and two buys. So you could buy maybe a market for five and a seller for two. Or you could buy a smithy and a village. Or you could buy a gold and a copper and leave one coin unspent or you could buy just a gold, you don't have to buy a second card. Now, any unspent money just disappears at the end of the turn, but maybe that's what you want. So all those bonuses make sense?